So to summarize the lower limb, we are talking about the femoral triangle, the contents, the compartments in the thigh, the compartments in the lower leg, and the sensory supply to the leg and the uh, foot. To the femoral triangle, the boundaries will be the sartorius laterally, adductor longus medially, and the inguinal ligament superiorly, forming the apex here. Then this part is called the subsartorial uh, or the Hunter's canal, and then through the adductor hiatus, which is the opening between the adductor magnus and the femur, is where the femoral artery becomes a popliteal artery, and the popliteal vein ascends as the uh, femoral vein. So the contents of the femoral triangle from lateral to medial will be the femoral nerve, femoral artery, femoral vein, and into which empties the long saphenous vein down there, and medially will be the femoral canal. This is what this is what we are seeing down here is the long saphenous vein accompanied by the saphenous nerve, which is a continuation of the femoral nerve. Saphenous nerve sens supplies sensation to the medial aspect of the foot and the ankle. And this is the dorsal venous arch giving rise to the long saphenous vein. We can see the green structures here, which corresponds to the deep peroneal nerve and the superficial peroneal nerve. This is the anterior tibial artery, which continues as a dorsalis pedis. This will be the peroneal artery supplying the peroneal compartment. So if you look at the dorsum of the foot, the first web space is supplied with a deep peroneal nerve, second, third and fourth web space are supplied by the superficial peroneal nerve. If we turn him to, uh, to his back, what we are looking at will be the sciatic nerve. As I said, the sciatic nerve lies between the, in terms of surface marking, identify the posterior superior iliac spine, ischial tuberosity and identify halfway point. Then between the ischial tuberosity and the greater trochanter, identify another halfway point. And the sciatic nerve runs right in the midline, supplying the hamstrings and as it comes to the popliteal fossa, it divides into a common peroneal nerve and a tibial nerve. What we are seeing here is a popliteal fossa with its boundaries, semimembranosus, semitendinosus medially, biceps femoris laterally, medial and the lateral head of gastronomous muscles. In terms of structures, the most superficial structure will be the nerve, here in this case the tibial nerve. Deeper to the tibial nerve will be the popliteal vein and the deeper structure will be the popliteal artery which further divides into an anterior tibial artery, posterior tibial artery and a peroneal artery. The dotted lines shown here is the course of the short saphenous vein which is accompanied by the sural nerve. The tibial nerve and the posterior tibial artery run together in the posterior compartment and run behind the medial malleolus along with the deep tendons of the posterior compartment and then they go into the sole of the foot to divide in the medial and lateral plantar nerves and the medial and lateral plantar arteries.